Hiya, lockdown has lifted. I am in the bathroom again for the first time in what feels like forever. And I'm in the West London bathroom of somebody I've been trying to interview for about four years. Finally, I have, and I'm super excited. It's Lisa Armstrong, chief hair and makeup designer on Strictly Come Dancing. Thanks for having me. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. I love this bathroom. Do you know, these things are tricky because sometimes when we're doing in the bathroom with, I get there and it just feels really kind of, somebody's tidied up too much or made it look like a museum instead of a living bathroom. Yeah. But your bathroom feels really homely. It feels yeah. like a real bathroom. Do you spend lots of time in here? Yeah, I love it. It's like your own little sanctuary, isn't it? Totally. Also, as well, I like the fact that it's, it's quite... A, I'm lucky I've got quite a big bathroom. Also, it's I like the light coming in from the yeah. shutters. But then you also hide yourself away, shut them all up, run the bath, and I've got the TV here. Nice. Put the TV on, put a load of bubbles in the bath and just sit... Little face pack on, just have a little chill out. Yeah, completely. <laughs> I, I'm the same. It's the one place where it's sort of nobody can bother me. Yeah. I'm just in here on my own. Shut the door and let the world leave the world behind. Yeah. So we're gonna. I know literally everybody watching this is gonna yeah. want to talk about Strictly, and we're yeah. definitely gonna come back to that. But I want to talk about how you even ended up there in the first place. So your background originally was in music. Yeah. At what point and why did you decide that what turned you on was backstage, not front of house? Well, actually, before we even got into the band um, part of my career, I used to do disco dancing. And that was from the age of six. And I used to compete all across the country, wearing the big sparkly outfits. It's quite doing... full circle, isn't That's it? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So it takes me back to even further than just the pop career. Yeah. So I started disco dancing, like I said, at age six. Um, sparkly costumes, every single colour you can imagine. And because my mum wasn't into hair and makeup that much, I was left to my own devices. So from an early age, I was doing my own hair and makeup. So if I had like an orange, black and white costume, I'd design a big orange and white eye makeup. And literally, I look back now, I look absolutely ridiculous. And where would you get the stuff? Would you raid your mum's bag? No, my mum, we were, I had a little fish and tackle box. Got from, um, well, my dad um, used to do fishing and had the, he had this box, so I sold it, cleaned it all out and stuck loads of stickers on it and glittered my name, Lisa, and glitter on the box Love and it. stuck little hearts and little care bears and things all over the box. So then we used to, mum used to let me go down to Superdrug and stuff and pick little bits of makeup and what I wanted to match my costume. That's funny. So I wonder if, if, if that was the true you. That's what I mean. So from that childhood, in, from disco dancing, going into the band, doing the whole performing thing, um, it does feel like it's gone full circle. So when the band sort of came to the end and it was sort of pittering out, I was a bit like, so what do I do now, age 21, career finished in the pop career? Um, what was my one true passion and what did I feel like I wanted to embrace and delve into, into a bit more. And that was makeup. So I thought, okay, well, stop messing about. Get yourself to college. Get yourself, you know, a qualification and see how it goes. So where did you go? Where did you study? At Glauco Rossi School uh -huh. of Makeup. Yeah, yes, so quite I did a that. famous school. Yeah. And yeah, I'd done um, the intense course there. And then because I'd came from that world of, of the music business, I knew quite a few people within the industry. Yeah. So a lot of the people that worked in magazines and TV productions and things like that. So as soon as I qualified, I could hand out sort of like little lookbooks and, and CVs and say, you know, I'm willing to do stuff, I'll help out, I'll assist, I'll do, you know, can I come on shoots in, in, in a background, you know, area rather than in front of the camera, like you said, it was like that transition. And um, it just went from there, really, and it just sort of stuck, and I just sort of built up a career and my own sort of client base from that. So obviously, because because you're you're properly taught, you're properly educated yeah. in makeup, and you know you can do any kind of makeup, and, and the range that you've done uh, with Avon, which we'll talk about in a bit, obviously yeah. has very wearable kind of everyday makeup as well as fancier things. But what was it for you? about what is it really about glitter and spangle and sparkle that's I don't know. so special? I, I think I'm a magpie in a former life. Yeah. I think I'm just drawn to it. I Honestly, I see a bit of sparkle, I'm like, ooh, stick the finger straight in. I don't know, I just think it's... I think it just it's like makes you happy, it makes you confident, it lights up your face. I mean, I just love the colours and I love experimenting and I just love trying things. And that's what I think the great thing is about makeup and being a makeup artist is trial and error. You know, who's to say that's right or wrong? Yeah. Who makes up the rules? Yeah. If you like it, try it. If you don't, don't. If you want to wear a green sparkly eye with an outer corner of an orange sparkle, if you like it, wear it. And if you don't, take it off. 
That's the joy, isn't that's it? Not, that, you know, that's the joy of makeup versus anything else. If you cut your hair, you have to wait ages for it to that's, grow back. That's, if that's you the have beauty plastic of it. surgery, yeah. you're done forever. Yeah. The great thing about makeup is you just start again. Every and that's day. and that's why I say to people when they come into the makeup chair, you have to have like the confidence with within me as a makeup artist right. to be able to trust what I'm going to do. And it might be a bit out of your comfort zone. So let's try it. Let me finish. Let's see. Do you feel comfortable? Do you feel confident? And if not, we we'll change it. It's fine. It's just makeup. We can wipe it off. Start again. So for a magpie and a former <laughs> disco dancer and pop singer, I'm a disco dancing magpie. You are as a disco dancing magpie. Strictly has kind oh of got God, to be the yeah. ultimate, really, hasn't it? It's yeah. almost funny how you it is given your background. Yeah. Tell me. How, what does it look like? What, what happens? What's the process with the contestants? Because Strictly is happening this yes, year. Yes, it is happening. Albeit in this strange new world that yes. we're living in. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about what that looks like and then tell me about your work on Strictly and how that goes. So Strictly, obviously, is a massive, massive process for any celebrity coming into, into the show. Uh, whether you're a newsreader, you're an actress, you're a, a sports personality, whatever. It's a massive deal because you're way out of your comfort zone. Um, you're completely taken away from what your profession is and you're pushed in front of the camera yeah. wearing big sparkles. It's intimidating. It is intimidating. The fake tan, the fake lashes, the big elaborate costumes, the hair, the makeup. So I think the first process we have to go with, with the new we have to go through with the new celebrities is about gaining trust. Uh, it's about actually being personal to them and being one-on-one -on -one with them and trying to push them out of their comfort zone, but not straight away. So there is a process. So it is, try a few individual lashes before we go to the full strip, if you're not used to it. Or, do you know what I mean? So it's a process of, like, gearing up to the glitter. We don't want to go all out week one, because where are we going to go week 16? We can't yeah. do the whole big yeah. blowout on week one. So you try to tell a story with the So we try to tell a story. And what I love is when the contestants that are in the final, they show the back journey yeah. of, of week one to 16 or whatever yeah. it is. And you see all the difference in the hair, the makeup, and all the yeah. different weeks that we've done different things. You think, oh my God, I forgot about that. Oh, that's when she was uh, happy to do this. Oh, that's when she sort of let her barriers down a bit. That looks amazing. Because some people do come in and find it really intimidating. Like, you know, if you're a newsreader, you're sat behind a news desk and you're only sort of seen from sure. here up, so it's just about this and they like it this way and, and that's fair enough. But again, you're not there now. You're, ta-da! There must be some contestants, actually, who come along to Strictly and go, give it to me, give me the full Strictly oh, experience. Yeah, it must be like escapism uh, for them. Absolutely, and I would be that. I yeah, would be that person. I would as well. If I was a contestant on the show, I would, I would be like, spangle me up, yeah. glitter me up, lash me up. I don't think I'd be able to move on the dance floor because I'd be full with the yeah. whole lot. Um, but yeah, again, so there is the other side of that. So some of those type of people, you have to tone down a bit because you're like, well, you can't have it all now because again, sure. where are we going to go in week 16? So what's the process? So you head up a team yes. of hair and makeup artists yes. and presumably tanning people, nail people and we, all of we that We bring stuff. them all, yeah, they yeah. all get involved. So yeah. you're the boss of that. So that's, yeah. And you've got all these contestants. And we've got the assistants as well, which is and massively important. Absolutely, really, really important. And so, what do you do? You look at, do you look at each contestant individually and go, what have you got coming up? Where are we going to take this? How does so it? So we have a concept sheet, and that's given us uh, given to me weekly. And basically, on the concept sheet, it's the couple dancing, what style of dance they're dancing to, their staging notes, like they start camera left or upstage or they're sat in a barrel. Music or choices. Music choice. The style. Is it old school? Is it you know, new new. Yeah, modern day um, so we get all that down on a concept sheet and then the costume designer Vicky gives us a, a printout of like what the costume is going to look like and then from there we then design the hair and makeup and uh, well then I design the hair and makeup and then say we'd like to have it like this we'd like to but maybe you go for this color we're going to bring out blah 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 we'll do this um, and it's really important that all the that side of the teams work together because it all needs to marry, of it course. all needs to become one, and it all needs to look immaculate. So you must have to collaborate with wardrobe a lot. Exactly that. So if, say for example, if we've got one girl with long dark curly hair down her back, and then Vicky on the back of her dress has got all this di diamante detailing on the back, we wouldn't want to have her hair down. Yes. Because then it's going to ruin the look yeah. of the costume, so we'll tuck the hair up.
or if they're doing a wild dance like a samba or when they're flinging around doing a jive, you don't want necessarily the hair down because it's just going to fly in their face, stick to the eyelashes, stick to the lip gloss so the hair goes up. So it's all working things out like that as you go along really and dress running it and seeing how it looks on dress run. And if it works, it works perfect. We perfect it. If it doesn't, we rejig it. Because you've also got all the crazy theme weeks as well, haven't yeah, you? Like that. a Halloween number or whatever where you're yeah, really love having that. to go to town. Yeah, love that. I literally am dreaming about that show weeks before it's even happening. And going through it in my head, going through it, what if we have one of these? What if we have one of them? Oh, it'd be nice to do one of them. Or, you know, And are you literally. somebody who's always kind of binging on magazines, Pinterest, Instagram, yeah. kind of sourcing ideas? Yeah, constantly. I'm quite interested to know how you feel about products. So in my job, when you're interviewing and speaking to makeup artists all the time, I find that lots of makeup artists, particularly film and TV makeup artists, don't necessarily love product in the way that maybe a master carpenter wouldn't really love nails and wood in that it's what you have to it's what you do it's what you yeah. need it's what gets you there do you still have kind of thrill moments over a product yeah you do and I get exactly what you're saying because like because we are so into our products and so into like new things and new things are coming out all the time as you know um but what's different with sort of me, and this is personally just for me maybe, I don't know if it's the same for the others, but working in TV, you always go back to your staple product. Yes. Because you know it works. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what that is. I just tend to go back. I find that particularly with film and TV right. um, artists. Maura Gross, who you may know, when, when we did her bathroom, mm -hmm. she uses whatever she loves for film, she always comes back to the same yeah. greasy, solid foundation I just, that she yes, loves because it yeah. works. Yeah, exactly that. So we do use different things, obviously, when we're doing sure. different, like the Halloween and the movie week and all that sort of thing, because you're creating characters within the char their character. Um, so that's a bit different. But when it's a normal Strictly week, I always tend to go back to my staple product. And I go, I know I like that. I know that works. I know that looks great. I know that that will suit the skin. And that because we also have to remember, they're flying around the dance floor 100 miles an hour. You can't stop someone sweating live on, no, on camera. You need to be able to predict how it's going you, to You kind of have it. to. And the same with like lipstick textures. You don't want them moving about. And sometimes, you know what, it's a live show. You know, they're hot, they're bothered. You know, they're sweating, their mouth's dry. And it's, you know, lipstick goes on the teeth. But it's a live show. What can you do? But you try and think about that when picking your lipstick, so that's why you tend to go back to if the mascara's gonna run, if the eyeshadow's gonna move, if the, do you know what I mean, like the glitter's gonna fall, or if the foundation's gonna smear. So I guess you do kind of tend to stick to your staple products that you know work. So before we look at your staple products and yeah. the products that you really love, yeah. um, just put people out of their misery. So Strictly <laughs> is happening Strictly in this crazy time. Strictly is happening. What's different? Well, obviously, current times, ev different for everyone in all industries. I kind of feel like we were left to, to the, the last minute uh, in obviously the beauty industry because obviously the close contact, which I, un I totally understand. Um, we're having to use obviously all the PPE stuff and we're having to do the social distancing in the studio. Um, we won't be doing big, um, like the Blackpool and um, stuff like that. Yeah. But it is happening as strictly as you know it and it will still be the best show on telly. I think people would be sad if it's not there. Like, I think it matters yeah. to British culture. Yeah. Like Bake Off or something. Some shows matter, don't yeah, they? And they're Strictly's such one of phenomenal those. big shows that they're like, you're sort of staple in your, year, in your year, aren't they? So it's kind of like your go-to show, you know, like everyone can sit down, the, winter, the winter's coming, Christmas is coming. It's such a family show for all ages that you can watch, you know, a four-year-old child enjoys it as much as a... 90 year old woman and so presumably when we were in total lockdown before we really knew whether things were going to lighten up a bit or whatever you must have not known strictly was happening for no, ages didn't know. nobody knew anything no. so you were spending your time doing what working on a massive project that we're going to talk about today why have you ended up doing a range with avon how did it come about why did you want to do it I think as a makeup artist, um, it's every makeup artist's dream to yeah. have your own product. If you are a product junkie like yourself, you love your products, um, it's literally just been um, a massive, massive 
I just, I've just loved every moment of it, basically. Um, Avon approached me um, about potentially doing my own range. Um, obviously, as you know, Avon is a mass, it's a household name in, in a brand. Yeah, iconic. And the funniest thing is, when I trained as a makeup artist, as I said at Glauca's, when I came out of there to, to work professionally, Avon was my first job. Oh, as a professional makeup artist. Oh my goodness! Is that not really weird? Yeah, that's Again, great. Again, full circle with the disco dancing going into the makeup going into Strictly. I've had the same sort of process with Avon. That's lovely. They also were really inspiring um, and really like passionate about giving me total control. So this brand is going to be mine and mine alone in conjunction with Avon and. I'm just so thrilled with it. What did you want to achieve that was different? I think for me, having like 20 years experience in the business and working with all sorts of people from all walks of life, whether you're doing magazine shoots or TV shoots or members of the public or makeovers or weddings or whatever it may be, um, I've gained that experience to be able to create this range knowing that I've picked the best bits of what I love in my staple range and now I'm giving it to you with my experience and my advice and showing you how you can use it and how you can make the best of you. And that's what was so important to me. I want women to feel confident. I want women to feel in control. I want women to feel that they can experiment and no one's judging. It's about me picking up this product and me wearing it with my advice on how to use the product, a high-end product, affordable price but for everybody to I was going to say was that really important yeah. to you that it was affordable because there's a democracy isn't there about it people can buy it 100% but why should bank. you be like you shouldn't be discriminated for for what you've got or what you haven't got it's like this range for me is for everybody so you can use a, a, a couple of the products all of the products you can have your favorite lipstick it's your go-to lipstick but it's affordable and it's going to make you feel confident it's going to make you feel like the best of you and that's why i wanted real women wearing high-end makeup being given advice and taking the advice from me for having 20 years experience and be able to feel confident in their own skin and being the best of themselves i'm not saying to people use this product because it's going to make you do this or look like that or this is going to change you i'm not going it's, here's the yeah. wands and we're going to change how you look and feel this is the product. I'm going to give you the advice on how to use it. It's a high-end product. It's, I'm so thrilled with every single product that I've designed. And here's how to use it. And this is my experience. And this is what I'm giving you. And I've looked into my makeup kit. I've looked into my staple products. I've looked into my own makeup bag. And I've brought together this 12 product staple range of the best bits that I can give to you. I think that I should get out of this comfortable bath and we should have a look at your favourite bits as well as all the bits that, all that the you bits. keep in your bathroom that you love to use. I know that some of your own brand is in among them, um, yeah. but like a true makeup artist, you, you get stuff from all over. You use yes. things from all over, so let's take And I think look. that's important as well. Like, Super important. Yeah, because you use different bits from... I mean, yeah, it's not realistic. Yeah. It's a, whenever we do a bathroom, I always have to say to people who are affiliated with the brand, I'm not prepared to do it if you're just going to talk about one brand, because that's not like. No, and that's not, yeah, that's, absolutely. And also, it makes me think you don't love beauty. And it's not also, looking it's, at it's being dishonest, isn't it? It's yeah, just saying, it's not I only have this and I only wear that. It's like, well, it, you it's don't. It's like nobody wears one designer from Doctor. Yeah, exactly. It's just not like. Exactly. So I'm looking forward to seeing what's yes. in there. So let me get my shoes back on. Right, do you need to hand out? <laughs> well, why not? Why not? So I love this. I love the way you've kind of spread your girliness now yes. throughout the big bathroom. Um, what, so what do you keep here? You've got perfumes. You're obviously yes. a perfume nut. Yes. And I like the bottles as well. Yeah. They just yeah. look pretty, don't they? Yeah. So I've obviously used the fragrance and now I've just got the bottles just sat there. Do you feel naked without a scent? Yeah, I do. I I, do. I, yeah, I've always, always, whether it's like a, a day scent, I would use like this as a, oh, as a spritz. Love our denim. It's just like it's you amazing. just blast it everywhere, can't you? So I love that as like a day scent. And I have my Michael Kors as, as my posh go to scent. So would this be your I'm going out with the girls? Yes. Yeah. So okay. nice. And people always say to me, oh my God, what perfume are you wearing? It's gorgeous. So this, this lovely LV case here, yes. is that the things you have to have on hand? Yes. Can we see what's in it? Yeah, of course you can. So basically, I keep this here all the time. Nice. And literally just pull, like literally so it's nice and neat, pull the little zip over so it just looks nice there. Mm -hmm. And then literally every day, I open it up and just go wallop. Love it. 
Do you do that every day? So every you've day. got that's the makeup artist thing though. Yeah. Don't you think you need it all in front of and you? And so then I can just have a look and think, well I'm not gonna use that today, I'm not gonna use that today, I'm not gonna use that, that or whatever, and sort of Love pick it. bits off, and then I can see it clearly. I like, don't need that, I'm not cutting anything. Um, so then I just like pick things out and then put them back as I go. Like, we don't need that, do we? Don't need eye drops. And then Every I just end up... always got eye drops with them, always, haven't they? Always, It's such an essential. Yeah, always. You need a fresh, clear, glowy eyes. So the first thing that I'm drawn to there is the Eborian CC because it's such oh, an amazing it. product. I love it. So my friend uh, Jo Jones, uh, she will be buried in it. Yeah. Like she cannot live without it. Absolutely love it. And literally, um, as soon as I, like, I literally, some days I just put that on and that's it. Yeah. Because I'm not really, when I'm not working, a faffa with makeup. Yeah. I just kind of like want to grab and go. But this is a staple. Just a perk up. Just a little perk up. And it just literally evens out the skin tone. Literally, li little, a little bit goes a long way, as you can see. And then it just turns into your own And would own you shirt. wear that around the house, or are you totally naked faced around no, the house? No, always. Always that? Always this. Yeah, always this. See how lovely that is. And every time, like, I have, like I said, I had this on, just as this alone, people say, well, what have you got on your skin? And I always say this, and they literally rush out to buy it. It's a and genius product. everyone comes back and say, oh my God, now I can't live without it. It is a genius So product. I love that, so I that can it. go back what in. What else have we got? Face moisturiser. Multi-active jewel clearance, bit of a classic. Yeah, classic. You know when you do find a product, like we were saying before, that you kind of go to and it works well for you and, and you like the payoff and you like how it feels. That's kind of been mine for years, to be honest with you. I always think about moisturiser, just get the one that suits you. Yeah, exactly. Moisturiser, it, it's not doing the job of a serum, a kind of corrective yeah. job. It's just to keep you comfortable, exactly. keep your makeup nice. So, yeah, I like that. And I like the smell of it as well, like going back to... The smell is very so smell. important, isn't it? The smells of things. Yeah, I think so. Some people are funny about fragrance, but I love fragrance. I do. Yeah, I like the whole the cleanness of it. So you've also got a bit of a clarins. Um, well, you can dot that into that exactly. So you're mixing that together to yeah. get a bit more of a a bit more of a glow. And you only need a couple of drops and just mix it on the back really? of your hand and then just in like the middle of the face and just blend it out and it works really well. I've noticed a bit of drunk elephant around the bathroom so you've got oh, yeah. a lip balm here and the detangle is it? Yeah. yeah. yeah How that's... are you liking that? Yeah well I obviously because I like I just said I've dyed my hair so much it was like in really bad condition so I find that this is really great I can just like literally wash my hair on clean hair use my tangle teaser put it in a part and push it back spray a load of this on and just go. So I'm not using heat on my hair constantly. I'm not like drying it all the time. I'm not using straighteners and stuff. But this like sets it so it's it actually it feels like quite healthy, just natural hair. Um, you've got a nice drunk elephant lip balm in there. Yeah, always have a lip balm. Always. I've got a few. Is Look. that is that your item that you've got too many of? Because I have too oh, many lip balms. Always. Balms. They're literally everywhere around the house. Yeah, always. But I also have that. Um, I don't know if it's like an addiction to buying them. So even if I go into like the chemist or into a makeup shop or a department store, I always one. leave with one. Yeah. I don't know what that is. You Look, there's another have one. Too many in the car, everywhere. Yeah, always. Oh, that's nice. French kiss, quarterly. Yeah. Oh, a little tinted number. Little tinted number nice. there. This is a nice one. A little bit of shine. Nice. Feeling a little bit glossy. Yeah. Do you like a gloss? I'm not good with gloss. Yeah. I, not all the time. I have to be in the mood. I have to be in the mood for gloss. I do prefer a matte, if I'm honest. Yeah. But I've again, it you never know, do you? Like the glitter spray, you never know when you're gonna feel in that mood to yeah. whack a bit of glitter spray. No, in sometimes it's required. <laughs> it's required. <laughs> <laughs> um, you've got a couple of your own lipsticks yes. in here. This one. Are these your favourite shades? Yeah, this is Gemstar. Look how lovely that is. Is that the one I'm wearing? No, I think you you had Zone. you had so yeah. Zone. Um, and I'm wearing I think Bex, but this one is another favourite of mine, Gemstar. That's Look how lovely this is. That's really nice. Dun, dun, dun. There you are. Does it feel it's got my name on the lipstick? Yeah, Does that's... it make you proud? Yeah. Actually, the first time I saw it, I was actually a bit nervous but emotional at the same time. Because you know, when you, of course. I've been working on this range so hard for like two years, and I've done every oh, that long. Yeah, it's literally been that long, and I've done every single step of the way from whether it's looking at um, looking at different brands for makeup inspiration tearing out pictures in magazines in you know wherever whatever it may be i've literally it's just been in on my mind for like the last two years and to see it come 
into form and see the product, I was nervous because I was worried how... It's like your child. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But literally from the swatching of colours to the packaging to the design to having my own signature, that's actually how I sign my name, to having it embossed in the side of the lipstick to picking models for the shoots to do, doing castings to do actually physically doing the shoots the makeup for for the um for the brochure every step of the way and even i actually even done with like eyebrow pencils swatched the colors and i drew the lines for the liner pen and like literally every single thing has been me do you know the bit i've always fancied about having um your own ranges i'd really really love to name products that would be my dream job naming well, colors you, did you name your colors yes what, and so you know, the oh, okay, I haven't got, well, I've got a liner here. So this is, this one is, um, where are we? This is Bryony. I don't know if we've got Bryony lipstick here. Anyway, so the inspiration behind naming the lip liners and lipsticks are all um, after my friends. Oh, yeah. so girl gang. So, so it's the girl gang. So I've got 12 lipsticks. There's t six um, satin finish. Oh, yeah, and rip your box. I'm oh, so desperate go on. to get in there. Can go I on. rip your box? Yeah, I'll let you. Are you sure? Yeah, go on. You can rip it. Um, so I have 12 lipsticks in um, a matte finish and 12 in a satin finish. They've each got their own um, lip liner. And it's nice, it's nice isn't it? And um, the inspiration from the idea of naming them came from... 12 inspirational women that are in my life and nice. my best friends. So what we done was we named, well I named the lip liner their name and then the corresponding lipstick shade was the nickname I call them. Oh I love it. So, yes. my, so my lipstick today is called Zoe. And the actual lip liner will be Zoe. Right. So then you have a, a Becky lip liner and a Bex lipstick. Then you nice. have, you know, so it goes like that. So yeah. you can see which one it corresponds with which colour shade for the lip How liner. How important are your so, girlfriends? Really important. I think, you know, that's like, they're the people that are behind you, aren't they? Of Support course. you and love you and, like, literally spur you on to, you know, to be inspirational and, yeah, I think yeah, they're really important. important. Yeah, that's really important. Well, so mascara, is mascara your ride or die not leaving the house without? Because it's lots of women's. I'm not so, no. no. If I go, like I said, if I, I'm shooting out the door... Either. I shoot out the door. It's more about that the um, CC Skin. the CC cream for me, but so I do this love is by Terry. yeah the by Terry one. Um, Are you ever monogamous to mascaras, or do you just run out of one by a different one? I am quite I am quite um, loose when it comes to that. Yeah. To be honest, yeah, I do like to try different ones. I do also like the Dior one, and I also like my one. Yeah. Oh, so you've done a mascara? Yeah. I don't know if we've got that. Oh, we'll, we'll find it for I'll you in a minute. That on me in a bit. Yeah, and this is an amazing product. And everyone even said to me today, um, "Are you have you got false lashes on?" UK lash. I can't see that. So eyelash. UK lash. Okay. Yeah, eyelash serum. So do you use that to grow them? Yeah. Does so it work for you? Well, yeah. Literally, I've really noticed the difference. So every day when I'm doing my uh, skincare regime, literally pop that along my um, lash line, and then I lift up my lashes with it, and then. Do you do that in the morning or at night? Every morning. Mm. And it actually has really worked because I faffed around a bit with um, eyelash extensions for a while and um, I just end up picking them out. That's the thing, you get to a point with them where they're loose and you just fiddle with them, don't you? And I'm you? such a picker. Yeah. I can't be trusted. Yeah. Like yeah. anyone will tell me, do not trust me with anything. These are going to be off within a couple of days and I've only just had them done. What, your gels? The acrylic. Pick? Yeah. Oh, Ter really? Terrible. Absolutely terrible. Yeah, I just... Um, I'm not good with extensions either because I, I, I pick them when they get loose but also they just leave my lashes really thin. Exactly that. So that's what happened when I started to like ping them out and then literally my eyes were water and along my like lash line they were swollen, my lid was swollen. So I just thought, right, you know what? You need to get over it. You're never going to have long hair down your backside. You're never going to have like natural curls and you're never going to be able to wear Love lashes. Love falsy anyway. Well, there we are. Love a falsy. So there you go. So uh, hand cream... Yeah. My hands smell lovely from your hand cream downstairs. If you oh, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, look, wear. this is a yeah, lovely one. Yeah, this is one. the one I just used in your loo downstairs, I think. I love a bit of rose, do you? Yeah, I do. I, I don't, don't like a big... rose perfume on me, but I love a rose no. everything else. I love it's a exactly rose the candle, same. a body lotion. Yeah, stuff. exactly the same. Yeah, I'm going to have a go at that now. So, yeah, look, I've got that rose oil. Here, look, the... um. The... Oh, show us your skincare. So what do you have here? You've got some Chantecaille rose oil, which is... 
a very luxe moment, isn't it? Mm. It's just a lovely moment. Yeah. Are you on the dry side, the oily side? I would go more dry, more a dry side. So literally when I take my makeup off of a night and that's when I remember. Do you sleep in your makeup? Sometimes I do. Shock. Do you that's really? an exclusive. Would you have had to, okay, walk me through this because I think loads of women do this, <laughs> right? And each to their own. But um, would you have to have had a few beverages for that to happen or would you just be knackered? Both. Either or, to be honest. Just just want to get into bed. I can't be bothered. Yeah. <laughs> so sometimes, so I always, so I'm good. I, I do I do take my makeup off. However, because I know sometimes I'll go out with girls and have several drinks. Yeah. Or I'll come home really late at night or I'm doing an event. I keep a micellar water and cotton on next to the bed for I'll those nights. Night. For those nights, yes, they're good because idea. I just it. want to kind of fall in. Where's my... I'm going to put So that. I can do it while I'm... Yes, That's happy. a good idea. I'm going to do so that. So I do it so I'm like, even when I'm half asleep, I can just at least do that. It was so nice though, isn't it, when you do do it. So I just... I always regret it. I always annoy myself that I didn't do it. Um, but when I do do it, I then literally plaster my face with this. For some bounce. Oh, so nice. I just wander around my bedroom and in the bathroom, just wandering, wandering, just massaging around your face. It's like a sensory you're in, moment, isn't You're it? in your own little world and just keep yeah. rubbing your face. Gosh. And then I've also got this rose. So that's a mask. Are you a masker? In the bath, I'm a masker. So you get in, you put your mask on, yeah. and then you chill. Yeah, I love that. Leave in conditioner in your hair. Mask on, soak, telly on. Fresh is Chill. famous for their masks. They're very good at masks. They're lovely, aren't they? Yeah, see, I'm oh, not I can't much open of a masker, it now. I have to say. Oh, but, you're not? Um, no, but I mean to be somebody who is. I just never really get round to it. But look at these lovely little. I like the little bits. The little it rose. smells amazing, that. Yeah. Like all the little rosy bits. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, isn't they? No, it is lovely. I'll do a peel mask, but I'm not very good at a pampery mask. Um, oh, but have you had one of them ones, it. that those, the charcoal ones? Charcoal's oh not my good for me because I'm so dry. Charcoal's I literally thought I was going to pull my face off. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you mean literally a peel? Oh no, that, I mean like an acid peel mask I will use. No, no literally. literally when you peel it off. When, so you're roughly my age, I think you're a couple of years younger than me. Um, when you were at school, can you remember those body shop masks that you peeled off, like one that. sheet, and it was like peeling an apple in one go? Love them. It's just like. Was it was cucumber sense. one, was it? There was a cucumber one, yeah, and it would dry like glue. Yeah, and, and then, then you could just go like that. Off. So oh, satisfying. So satisfying. Loved it. I love all that stuff. See, that's where it's probably come from. The picking. The peeling, the picking. Yeah, there's something very satisfying <laughs> about it. Olaplex, do you do Olaplex? Do yeah. you get it done at the salon? They well? do do that, yeah, when they do my colour, and then I've got this one for just every other week or so I'll just pop that on again yeah. like when you're in the bath just pop yeah. the plex on and Bond then bonding treats are really good on bleached hair aren't they yeah exactly I think I just I just got a bit carried away and it just went kept getting a bit blind I like that though I like the root yeah the thick it's, get, it's yeah. getting there but actually I was that bad I was just went all a bit willy-nilly it ended up like snapping off it was did like it that much at the front wow but fortunate for me I've got an amazing team of hairdressers at Strictly. Right. That so actually will they done, cut your hair on set if they, they have do, to? No, they did me um, hair extensions on these little tapes. So you would have never known. So I hid it. So they literally colour matched my hair with these tapes. I've got some dead hair flight floating around somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we could possibly look at some dead no. hair. Um, yeah. Or we can go into the cupboard. Can yeah. we look in your cupboard? Because I've had a little peek. I've been cheeky yeah, go on. and I've had a little peek. And it's an orgy of products. So I don't, I don't want to miss a thing. Should we get in there? It's a bit insane, really, isn't it? Like, this is like... I mean, it, I mean, it's no different from my house. My right. house is ridiculous as well. Um, Right, where, where, where do we where? Where? Yeah, that's what Okay, so the first thing I notice is, like, my favourite body product ever, which is Body Blur. Cannot live oh, without. God. Do you use that at work, or is it just for you? Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. All the time. It's amazing. So, Vita Liberato Body Blur. Yeah. It's so, so, so good. I'm going to have a go now. It's I forgot amazing, to put some on earlier. Literally, um, I literally have smothered it everywhere, to the point now where I get in my car, and my car seats are stained. <laughs> <laughs> I, I take it everywhere. Whenever I'm shooting, whenever I'm doing an event, I always take it. It's so good. Look how good that is. It's genius. I literally love it. I, I think do. I could do with 
I have never tried anything that does that job as well. It's and so I've good. I've tried pretty much everything, I think. I think I need to wash my mitt. Well, you might need to say goodbye to the mm. mitt, let's hope. I'm just going to put that in the bin. <laughs> Ignore that. It might that. be the end of the, the mitt. Of the mitt. It's natural life cycle. And look at this. This is how much of a product junkie I am. Vacay gummies. It's a supplement to take before you go sunbathing. Do you take um, what, what to, to, to make you go so, brown as a tan accelerator type thing? Yeah. Are you a sun worshipper? Do you like it? Not. I do like it, yeah, but I'm, I've got to be careful in the sun, as everybody does, because I'm quite freckly, quite moly, so I always wear a high factor, especially yeah. on my face. Yeah. And I don't like my head in the sun. No, I don't either. So just stick my body out. See, I'm always in the shade. I you love being in... outside in yeah, the sun, yeah. but I would always want to be in the shade. Yeah, I would, I would prefer to be in the, out in the sun, but in the shade. Yes, exactly. Yeah, but I don't know what that's all about. Well. It's not even open there. Well, you'll have to get stuff in today yeah. if you're ever allowed to go on holiday again. Yeah, exactly. Obviously body and like like the gummy bear things and like the skin so soft. This is kind of like a hair vibe going on. So Batiste, it is the best, isn't it? Yeah. An Elnet. I like yeah. that you've got the, the iconic yeah. but affordable classic. So yeah, you can't go wrong with that, can no. you? With, with the dry shampoo. No. Straight spray it in the root and then And would you use, use that as a dry shampoo or do you use it for volume? Dry shampoo. Yeah. Yeah, just in I the like root. And I love a bit of Elnet. Actually, like for the me, smell. it's the smell of I girls about to have a good time. I love the smell. That's the smell. I love it. I love it. And this is obviously a, a bit of a phase of hair colour things going on. I mean, rose. Colour, so, do you pink. do you like a crazy hair colour moment? Yeah. Yeah. I kind of feel like, yeah, change of mood, change of hair colour. So when you well, they're only wash in, wash out, aren't they? So it's funny because you keep mentioning little things that just kind of give you a little moment. A little moment. And I know you've had a really tough couple of years, which I'm not going to ask you about. But when you're going through a tough time, do you find that there's some therapy in beauty in a way? Do you feel? Yeah, like I do. I do feel because actually, I think I think like whatever you can do for yourself to make you feel better, then why not? Whether it's sticking some glittery spray in your root or is it, if it's laying in the bath and putting on a hydrating face mask or if it's using a luxury hand cream or makeup or, you know, whatever it may be, if it makes you feel good. Yeah, because I feel like not? I go through a phase. So if I'm really sad or I've gone through something really difficult, I sort of sit in my own filth and cry for a couple of days mm. and then there comes a point where it's like, put your makeup on. Get, get yeah, come on. Yeah, together. exactly that. So yeah, I kind of feel like those those products are sort of like a, almost like a well-being isn't it it's like yeah you know it makes you feel good then why not yeah so do you ever kind of look in the mirror and go come on now come on face on hair done um i kind of feel like sometimes because i'm quite confident person and because i'm quite confident in my own skin sometimes i think oh it is what it is but other times, then I think, no, come on, right, I need to, I want to do a face mask, I want to go and get my nails done, I want my hair coloured. Some self-care. Yeah, exactly that. So, yeah, but when I'm busy and I'm at work, I just need to, I'm get up and go. Right. Because I haven't got so time. So you would be like, hair scraped back. 100%. Big coat on, let's yeah. go to work. Yeah. Cause because it's not about getting up really early for Strictly. Yeah, to... absolutely. How long would a face of makeup for one contestant for a big extravaganza well, show? Well, we only get an hour. So you have to do it within an hour. So, so how many on your team? We have um, six makeup, six hair, four assistants. Um, but we start at like half eight, nine o'clock in the morning. And then we're constantly doing makeup and hair throughout the day because they're constantly being taken away to do other things, whether it's um, a dress fitting or a rehearsal or a dress run or an interview or whatever it may be. So they're constantly being taken away from us. So you could be halfway through a makeup and they get called away and they get pulled out of yeah, the chair and you're and like... and you may not see them again until just before. Exactly. So it is co a constant, you just have to keep your eye on eye on them because they they run off and do something else and get them back, anchor them down. Yeah. Like, them now back. give me my moment, you know? I always feel like it's like therapy when you're a makeup artist because there is nobody in any working situation who's more like touching you in your face, mm. looking you eye to eye. Do you find that contestants... Um, treat you a bit like a therapist sometimes if they're sometimes, worried about something. Yeah, absolutely. And, and like I said, like you're in such close, you know, contact and you're, it's a very intimate situation, isn't it? So it really I feel intimate. like you have to have that level of, you know, uh, respect and, and, and the confidence thing that you, you have to be like there to support them and there to be an ear 
shoulder to cry on um, and it's all about having that communication that relationship and that trust mm. that they know what that when they get that hour sat in that chair they can just go Whew. they can listen to music they can eat their dinner they can you know bubble, close their eyes and put their head back and have a little rest yeah. it's like complete like little sanctuary in a chair in a busy room full of of um, everybody else having their hair and yeah. makeup done. Um, it's very unique, I think, the makeup is. chair. You know, yeah, it is. Really unique. I and think it's, it's quite it's an a massive, relationship. Yeah, it's a massive trust thing as well, which I think, like I said before, is such an important thing. As a professional makeup artist, you have to have trust. Yeah. And that's why, with my going back to my range, is that that's what I wanted to create, like, and have a product and a range that people can trust. That it because would be like a safe pair of hands. Exactly that. And it's your go-to when you're feeling like not great and you want to go out and put your lippy on. You trust that product. Because I've said to you that this is what it is and this is what how I've created it and this is how to wear it and this is how to use the product. You trust in me and then, then you trust in yourself and then you have the trust and the confidence to wear the product. Yeah. Which is why I think it's a lot different than just saying, oh yeah, just wear that and I'll be all right, don't worry about it. It's actually not, it's come from my heart and it's, I'm really passionate about it. So that's why I feel like it's quite different to any other sort of high-end brands out there. It is for everybody. But can I ask you, because I often ask makeup artists this, do you, you seem like quite a self-confident person, do you ever have a moment where it's like, I cannot sit opposite one more beautiful person in my chair, I now yeah. feel like crap. Do yeah. you ever do that? Absolutely. You, yeah. 100%. Yeah. And constantly, as a makeup artist, you yeah. must be thrilled when John Sargent is sitting there. Well, you, yeah, yeah, you're like, come on, you, get yeah. back in. Yeah, bless him. Um, yeah, because also, like, you're constantly looking in the mirror. Yeah. Aren't you? Yes, exactly. And you're constantly looking at a beautiful face, like Abby Clancy, staring exactly. back at you, and you're looking in the mirror. I mean, at she's the same. criminally beautiful, isn't she? Yeah, she's yeah. insane. Yeah. So you constantly look at that reflection that you're it's seeing, on, and then your reflection, you think, oh my good God. D yeah. Like, look away now. I always think that's a lot. Yeah, it's quite, it's, yeah, it's quite um, annoying. Yeah. Annoying. Yeah. yeah. And but also, it's like, oh wow, it is what it is, isn't it? I'm, there, I'm not there, I'm not here for me. I'm there to make them look beautiful. Do you like being in your 40s? Yeah, I don't mind it. Yeah, I like it. Do you? Yeah. Yeah, I don't mind it. I think kind of like, at the end of the day, it is what it is, isn't it? Like, you can't, you can't do nothing about it, can you? It's better than the alternative, isn't it? The alternative is you don't get to grow old. Well, that's it. So, yeah. you know, that, that you can't stop that. So why not just embrace it, empower it, and just get on with it? I feel like I'm quite like that. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Are you, are you an optimistic person? Do you always think, whatever's going on, do you think, I'll be fine, I'll be fine? Yeah, I think I kind of like, you have to sort of like, when you're in this industry as well, it's, it's not, not always about you. It's like, well, I don't, you know, I've got to get up and go. I'm just, I'm out to do my job. I'm out to work. I'm out to, you know, make feel, people feel confident and people feel um, happy and people feel like, you know, within themselves, you know, great. So if you're not feeling great and you're putting that yeah, on I think them, that's true. you know, you don't want to go, oh, me, 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 me. Come on, me. it's just like, oh, you're bringing the whole mood down, guys. Liven up. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's about obviously being a positive person. But I do feel like, well, I've just found out I'm not a Scorpio. I'm fuming. What? Hang on. Back up there. So you thought that you were a Scorpio? Yeah. Your whole life? Yeah. And what, you've now discovered that you're not? Well, they've added a new star sign, so they've Have bumped they? everyone down a bit. Have they? Yeah. See, I'm so, and now so I'm supposed I don't to be a do Libra. astrology at all, so I had no idea that that's what had happened. Yeah, they've got a new star sign. They've found a new constellation, they've given it a name, and now they've bumped everyone up a notch, and now I'm not a Scorpio, I'm a Libra. Or something like that, or am I Virgo? Well, anyway, I'm fuming, because I had a tattoo done <gasps> as a Scorpio. <laughs> How many tattoos have you got? I think I've got nine. Beat me, I've got eight. Oh, have you? Mm. Yeah, but look at that now. What am I going to do about that? It's very pretty, though, still. I'll just have to show the camera. Look, it is really pretty. It's the little Scorpio constellation. You might have to do, <laughs> you might have to do a kind of cover-up situation. Like, I you know, know, there's men who have to cover their ex-wives' tattoos and stuff. You might yeah. have to have to... Oh, and there's, there's another one that you have to go by. It is what it is. See, you've said that about three times during your interview. Yes, so that's obviously a thing you really believe in. Yeah, well, it is what it is. Yeah. You so I always say to my mum, she's like, oh, God, this has happened, that's happened. I'm like, oh, well, it is what it is. 
the boiler's gone again. Oh, well, it's what it is. <laughs> Well, that was what it was. That was um, Lisa Armstrong's bathroom. Thank you so much for having thank us. You. Really thank you. Thank you for having me. appreciate you letting us into this very kind of private space and thank to be you so real me. about it. I've loved it. Thank it's been you. great. Thank you. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.